Huge 76, Myers 22. Then Guyverson, Newell, DeBoer, Crosgrove, Hoskins, Blaze, Joe DeBoer, and Dave Goodacre. Ready to come to the green here. Wirt will start on the pole. Transpotter appears to be working, so we will be able to score him in his spot. Wirt and Twitch have bring them to the green in the first qualifying heat of the night for the HRW Automotive Mini Stops. One car not making the call is John Jansen's in the 66, so that's a contender that these drivers won't have to deal with here. Up front, Twitch it quickly opening up a lead. Three wide for second as Newell will take that for the moment. Yeah, Newell into the second spot. Here comes Crosgrove with a nice run on the outside. We'll grab the third position in car number 96. So but Crosgrove up to third. Myers back to fourth and the pole sitter now slips back to fifth. Crosgrove working over the 26 of Newell now as he gets to the inside for that second spot. Side by side for fourth as Myers and Wirt go at it. Then it's Hoskins, Gooch and uh, the Dusty DeBoer 23 car, I believe, has the final transfer at the moment. Nope, that would be Gooch in the 76 with DeBoer working on him for the final transfer. So Rob Twitchett leads the way in the 0-1 car. Then it's the 96 of Crossgrove. Newell right now in the 26. Draws up even to him going into corner number three. The battle right now for the fourth spot is Wirt and Myers. In the, as they work it off for corner number four, the... 68 and the 22 of Myers going at it with Hoskins now into the mix. Good race for that final transfer. Dusty DeBoer, the bomber track champ, has that spot now over Gooch. And then it's Joe DeBoer in there as well. Up front now, three wide for the lead as Tim Newell noses ahead. Twitch it, twitches a little bit down there in corner four. And now Crossgrove gets to the inside for second. Put Newell to the top of the board. Crossgrove now to second, but Twitch it not going away. He's found a line that he likes right up there in the loose stuff and just trying to keep it wide open as best he can in that 0-1 car. Now Hoskins has t caught the top three. A good run here for the 37H. So Newell has the lead second, Crosgrove. Then third, it's Twitchett. But now, as you mentioned, Hoskins gets to the inside after he started 11th. So 11th now to third for Hoskins as he is looking strong in that Volkswagen. Off of corner number four for the final time. The checkered flag will fly, and Tim Newell will pick up the win. And heat race number one of O'Brien Crossgrove. Then it's Rob Hoskins, Rob Twitchett, Kyle Wirt. Then it's Myers and Joe DeBoer. And the 26 did an extra lap. Will there be any penalty there, Tommy? Just listening to the race director here he did not mention that one so tim newell might have gotten away with one there two rolling on the speedway again 13 cars top seven transfers starting on the pole the 6x mike serentacos starting second the number 90 chad smelzer starting third 17 mike taylor starting fourth doing double duty tonight the number 51 of trevor young starting fifth 79 steve miller starting six 54 chris french starting seventh the number 95 is kevin pauls tonight then it's the 49 of Gary Hodgson. The number nine is Tim DeBoer. He starts ninth. Starting tenth, the number two is Matt Newell. Starting eleventh, 81 Lofton Schutz. Starting twelfth, the number 11 P of Patrick Abramson. And starting thirteenth, the number 60 of Martin Schroeder. So Kevin Paul's in the 95 tonight. Used to seeing him in the 46 car this year. And Melzer did not get going on that start. Neither did Hodgson. As both of them have troubles, that's good news for Saren Tacos and everybody else who started on the inside line. Well, it looks like both Smelzer and Hodgson have their cars going. Now Hodgson's car, well, it's spitting and sputtering. It'll go, and then it stops in the 49. So troubles for Gary Hodgson right now as we come by to complete lap number white. One, Mike Saren Tacos, your leader over Mike Taylor in that 17 machine. There's a bunch of beating and banging back in turn four at the back of the pack. And now again, Schutz and Schroeder get into it in turn number one. Both keep it going there, but watch that 81 and 60. They've already run into each other a couple times here early in this one. Off a of corner number four, Mike Sarantakis leading the way by a handy amount over French in the 54. 
Trevor Young doing double duty tonight in that 51. He's also in the Crate Sprint 51X. He's running third. Now they're going to make it four wide to the outside goes Smelzer. They all fan right back out, and it's the 79 of Miller grabbing the fourth spot over DeBoer, Taylor, and Smelzer for the moment in that seventh position. Boy, there can't have been much room between Smelzer and that turn two wall out there as he was way up high. Now contact between Taylor and Pauls in the 95. Again, everybody keeps going, but there's been a bunch of fender banging here in heat race number two. That all benefited the 90 of Chad Smelzer who got by both of them and he gets into the sixth spot. So right now the 95 of Pauls, he is the transfer car. Everyone behind that on the outside looking in. The pressure is on now with two to go. Saren Tacos with a big lead. The three Mustangs out front of this one and Steve Miller trying to make it four Mustangs in, in the top four spots as that's one of the better battles on the track with DeBoer in the nine and the 79 of Miller. White flag out now up front for Saratacos. Good battle back there from fourth on back. Four wide, they will go down through corner number two. Miller on the outside now. Here comes Paul right up through the middle. DeBoer on the bottom side. Pauls will grab the fourth spot. Nice bit of driving as the checkers come out. Saratacos gets the win. French will be second, Young is third. Fourth is Pauls, fifth will be DeBoer, sixth will be Miller. And I'm gonna go to the transponder to call that seventh and final transfer. It looks like Chad Smelzer got it in the number 90 car. So Pauls, Schutz, Taylor, Hodgson, Schroeder, and Abramson are heading to the B main. And still some beating and banging there heading into the pit lane between some of the drivers who finished just outside the transfer spots. He raced Starting fifth, number 93, Chris Reichman. Starting sixth, it's the 64 of Doug Erskine. Starting seventh, the four of Aaron Rowitzki. Starting at eighth, the 88 of Adam Nye. Starting ninth, one of the championship contenders, the 63, Brandon Crumby. Starting tenth, the 21X of, is Mark Bazine. Starting 11th, the championship leader going for two in a row, the 66X of Brandon Jansen. Then the 45, Rob Souter. And the seven of 40, uh, the starting in row number seven by himself, a 43C of Clinton Nichols. Here we go, he raced number three on the track and ready to go. Green flag is out, Olivieri gets a good start. So Olivieri in the Fortino's 16 has the lead here, then it's Sims in the 17K who moved up from the Bombers and she's got that second spot, a bit of a slow, herky-jerky start to this one. Working off the inside, Jonathan Ayrton puts the 21 car down on the bottom of the veteran. Doug Erskine works to the top here in the number 64. It's Reichman with design all up the tailpipe of the 93. Three wide there for the third spot as Reichman was in there. Got sideways now at a corner two though, and that allows Erskine and Ayrton and also Mark Bazine up to get around the 93. And now heavy contact. Sims gets into the 64 of Erskine. And now she comes back down across the track and catches the 88 of Nye. So all kinds of carnage here out of corner four on lap two. So yellow is out here. And now the four of Rewitzki has spun it. Actually, no, that's another four. Four S, we'll get a name for you on that one. Problems for the 29 here at the back. Gonna need a hook on the left front there, Tommy. You can see the Eggs Custom Fab 29 with problems. The left front coming apart. So tough break for Youngblood. That car had a good run in the Art Hill Memorial last week with D.V. Bowden behind the wheel. Drove all the way up from the back to get a top five. Choosing the inside lane for the restart. That puts Bazine to the outside, the 21X. Then Chris Reichman, Adam Nye, Kalia Sims, Jonathan Erden, and Brandon Jansons. Those are your transfer cars at the moment running in the top seven. Good start here side by side as they come through into turn number one, Olivieri and Bazine. Olivieri, the newcomer here, moved up from the Bombers and is giving these top drivers a run for their money. That car has looked very good this season for Fabio Olivieri as he has run X, you say, very well in that machine. Now how about the 63 of Crumbie? He's had a fantastic season working here on the back door of the design Twin X. Those two cars have run nose to tail a lot this season. And now Crumbie gets a run out of corner two. Can't get a move done that time, but Crumbie is right there looking for that heat race win over Mark Bazine. 
Design smooth and steady off the bottom of turn number four with two to go here for the Burger Barn 21X Ace One construction car of Mark Design. The Amsoil 63 machine of Crumby trying to take this shot at it as they're both rear wheel drive power and try and pull away from that other rear wheel drive machine of Reichman, Ayrton, and the Jansen 66. So rear wheel drives really showing their uh, power here in this one, Tom. Yeah, Libby Airy, the only front wheel drive car in a transfer spot right now as Erskine in the 64 has the final transfer spot, the seventh and final spot. Nobody else is that close at the moment with the white flag in the air. Design to the bottom here of three and four will come around and pick up the qualifying heat race win. Here, Mark Bazine gets it done ahead of Brandon Crumby. Then Chris Reichman, Jonathan Ayrton, Brandon Jansen, Fabio Lanier, and Doug Erskine. Your unofficial top seven here who will transfer directly to the A feature tonight. And we say unofficial because they do have to cross the scales after the heat race. Well, Tommy, also we say unofficial at the end of the feature race. For example, Mark Bazine and Jake Bazine ran very good last week. Jake Bazine won the Art Hill Memorial. Well, there was some serious tech work done on that car. They took the engine. This one, then Taylor and Dusty DeBoer, row two. Matt Newell and Gary Hodgson, row three. Then Kalia Sims and Lofton Schutz in row four. Those are the drivers right now in the best position to get a transfer spot. Here we go. Green flag is out from Kyle McKenzie. And we are on it back here to the inside. Comes to Taylor, 17 to four, trying to work the outside with Gooch. The meat in the middle of the sandwich. He will pull up to the outside, and here comes DeBoer back to the inside. Newell going four wide down the back straightaway. Wow, DeBoer somehow comes out as the leader. Gooch back to the second spot. Schroeder now working that inside line. He'll work his way up there in behind DeBoer, and oh, hard contact into the wall in corner number four for the 81 of Lofton shuts. Still trying to grab a gear though. Lofton driving away here in the 81 onto the back straightaway. They go Schroeder. Schroeder, sorry, with the advantage as he leads the DeBoer 23. Kalia Sims coming up on the inside of Adam Nye with Guyverson there. We have one heck of a B-main going on. Schroeder, your leader at the line. DeBoer in second. Newell right now third, but here comes Taylor to the outside of him in the 17 machine. The pinball's right in the thick of it as well, Clinton. Down the chute they come. Newell working to the inside here, the DeBoer 23, trying to get the line on the bottom as they bring it through three and four, it will be the 17 of Taylor working the outside. As Kalia Sims gets a bit loose and the teammate drives by on the top. Good battle right now going on for the final transfer spot with Martin Schroeder out in front. Dusty DeBoer right now in that second position. They're holding down those positions. Newell in third as they come down off of corner four. This time by it'll be four on the board and two laps to go. Schroeder with the advantage to four. A long way back in second. Newell there running the inside with the 29 working on the top as they get a little bit loose through turn 22. And now Newell coming back in the 23 as they go three wide into three. Youngblood through the middle, grabs the spot away from Newell. Now goes for second as the white flag comes out. Youngblood had to get out of the throttle. DeBoer has the second spot with one to go. White flag here through turn one and two for Martin Schroeder. He's got the advantage. Youngblood coming to the inside here of the DeBoer 23. Down the back straight away they go. Those are up at the front. Newell's got four. Taylor, Kalia Sims, and Adam Nye, your unofficial seventh place car, trying to grab a spot into the feature. Checkers in the air. Martin Schroeder gets the win over Dusty DeBoer. Then it's Tim Youngblood. Newell, Taylor, and then it's the Kalia Sims machine and the 88 of Nye will make it in to tonight's A-Main. Everyone else done for the evening. A great field of cars here tonight. 39 in total for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. The Rookie of the Year leader coming into the night as well. He's trying to lock that one up and go for the championship here. So keep an eye on that 63 and the 66X starting nose to tail in rows number 10 and 11. Again, we want to thank Epic Racewear for presenting our season championship night here again in 2016. Down the back stretch they go. 
Kyle Wirt and Tim Newell leading the way for the final points race of 2016 for the mini stocks. Well, here we go, Tommy, the final point nine for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks, and green is out. Kyle Ward gets overhauled here on this start. Missed a shift or something, 68, dropping like a rock. Hoskins in the 37H had a good run in his heat race, and he's carried that into the feature so far, the early lead for the Volkswagen machine. Then it's the Honda behind him, then a pair of Mustangs. Now Chris French and Brittany Myers get into it, and that puts French back a few spots as everybody sorts out here trying to get single file if they can. Three wide through the middle portion. Four wide is Erskine and Smelter. Corey Ayrton and Myers. Now Erskine gets loose in two. Oh, he gets turned around, gets cuffed, but somehow straightens out. What a good bit of driving by the back half of the field. Boy, that was right in front of the two championship contenders, Brandon Crumby and Brandon Jansen. They both snuck through, as did everybody else. And we see green flag. Brandon Jansen's three wide back there with Youngblood and Nye up front. It's all Rob Hoskins right now. For a minute, they were five wide at the back. Craziness ensuing here as Jansen's got a hold tight and get up front of that Crumbie 63. As you mentioned, just like Bailey, the magic number is 10. So Hoskins has opened up a big lead here, looking for his first feature win of the season. Got a straightaway lead over Tim Newell, then it's Tim DeBoer. Mark Bazine's already made his way up from row number 10, up into the top five in that 21X car. So he gets around DeBoer now for the third spot. Working this one back around to the back straightaway. Hoskins with a big lead as Bazine finally gets around the DeBoer 9 and the Newell 26. Trevor Young running good in the top five here in the 51. Trevor Young gonna pull double duty here as he's gonna get into, his, get into his crate sprint car right after this one. Right now he's running up in the top five in the mini stocks, trying to take away that fourth spot from Tim Newell. Here comes Chad Smelzer in the 90 car. He's made his way up a few positions as has Saratakos in the 6X. Well, as they work this one around to lap number six, Bazain. Finished third last week, would love to get up a couple spots, but he's gonna need a caution here to reel in that Hoskins 37H. Has problems here for the 95 on the back shoot. He gets sorted out, we keep rolling. Hoskins' quickest lap of the race is faster than Bazine's quickest lap of the race, so Hoskins has that Volkswagen moving tonight as he has almost a full straightaway lead over Bazine. Then it's Tim DeBoer, Chad Smelzer, and Trevor Young as they come up on what would be the halfway point in a regular Friday night feature, but tonight they'll go 20 laps on season championship night. So a few more laps for Hoskins to try to lock this feature down. Well, Hoskins is having a great night here. That early jingle when they got crossed up really helped him drive away from this field. Chad Smelzer, another guy who's got a great drive going in fourth, hasn't had good luck, but he's had speed this past month or so. Smelzer started ninth up to fourth, and he's looking for the third spot on Tim DeBoer as DeBoer works around the 22 of Myers to put her a lap down. It's still Hoskins up front at the halfway signal now, 10 in and 10 to go, and Hoskins may catch some heavier traffic here before the end of this one. Hoskins still has a fair way to go, but you're right, Tommy's extra distance could pose an issue for him here. Still 10 laps to go in this one. So Hoskins has the lead here. Bazine has eaten into it just a little bit. He's taking about two tenths oh, of a second off yellow. every lap, but now that gap is erased as the yellow is out. Joe DeBoer and Steve Miller get together in corner two. Flat right rear for the 95 is the call over the radio. Yeah, a bunch of stuff going on there. Paul, Paul's in the 95 with a flat right rear. The yellow came out for Miller and DeBoer stopped up in corner two. They got it back going again. And the track crew are going to attend to something that's just up out of the... Around the front end on a Mustang. 
but on these front wheel drive cars, drive axles and all kinds of other mechanical extra pieces to repair and make sure are straight before we go. And a good battle here between a couple of rear wheel drive cars on the inside, a couple of front wheel drive cars on the outside. As the pool table smoothness of this track really equalizes the field. When it's really dry slick, the front wheel drives seem to have an advantage, and when it is heavy and tacky, the rear wheel drives seem to do better. We'll see what happens here. Nine laps to go in the HRW Automotive. Final points night here on Epic Race for a Championship Night. Tommy, bring us back to the green. Hoskins choosing the outside groove for the restart, and he tries to pinch Bazine down there on this one, but Bazine strong on the inside of turns one and two. They'll go side by side out of corner two and behind them. It's chaos as they went four wide down the back straightaway now. Everybody trying to sort out. Still right there. Look at that field around the sixth or seventh row. Craziness now. Smelzer gets overhauled by Reichman, who will slide to the inside. Brandon Crombie and Jansen's in the 66X. The championship contenders now back in this fight and part of the story once again. And still Hoskins up in the front of this one as Bazine takes another shot at him down in corner three and four. Can't get it done that time. And Hoskins will lead with now seven to go in this one. Hoskins, Hoskins, sorry, go ahead, Clint. I was gonna say Crumby making good moves here underneath. Reichman, Smelzer, and Young all in the past couple of laps, and now he's working on the DeVore number nine. Keep your eye on that white and black number 63 of Brandon Crumby up on the outside trying to come around the nine of DeVore. So Crumby doing all he can here to try to take this championship away from Brandon Jansen's, but as long as Jansen's finishes in the top 10, it won't matter what Crumby does as he now gets clear of DeVore for the fourth spot. Hoskins continues to lead here in that 37 as he holds off Mark Bazine, one of the fastest mini stocks anywhere in the province. How about Trevor Young having a good battle here in the 51 with Chris Reichman in the 90 of Chad Smelzer. He's doing double duty and now the yellow is out. Kyle Wirt gets into the wall on the inside of turn four and knocks the front end off that 68 car, gets it back going. All right, so at intermission, Adam Ross asked me what was going on down at Oswego Speedway. So I'm going to tell him that Michael Muldoon has the pole for the Oswego Classic on Sunday. And our Canadian drivers, Brian Litt and Dave McKnight, have some work to do. They're 26th and 24th in time trials, respectively. He asked me to give a shout-out to the Red Dusters baseball team in their almost championship season. <laughs> I thought the Red Dusters were his team. They're dusting off bowls of chicken wings or something. Ooh, throwing the barbs already. I tried to message out so we could say hello. He's ignoring me tonight. So here we go. Green flag is out. Hoskins once again jumps out front. And that shows you how potent that Volkswagen is because not too many guys, Tommy, have been able to drive away for the 21X. Yeah, Hoskins has brought that older Volkswagen out the last little while. He had a newer style Beetle for a few weeks at the beginning of the season, but he's having some good luck here tonight with that older car. Now it's five to go officially for Hoskins. Here comes Bazine with another challenge to the inside, but now a tangle on the front stretch as Sims and Miller get into it. So the yellow flag again comes out and there's a fire or something under the hood of the 54 of French. Fire crew already on the scene. And what a great job our safety crew do. Dustin Anderson in there to roll under there and put it out. Great job. How about a hand for our safety crew, ladies and gentlemen. They do the best job, and we are so proud of the safety crew we've got here. They're not always graceful, but they're effective. I was, <laughs> was going to say, stop dropping rolls when you're on fire. Hey, not when the car's on fire. Leave him alone, guys. <laughs> he was there when he needed to be, and I don't care how smooth it looks, as long as they're getting the job done and put that fire out extra quick for Christopher French. So now they all have to get back in their buggies because they're also the push crew. So we're going to need to push on the 88. One of the best things I've seen in a long time from a safety crew was the Knoxville Nationals a few weeks ago. If you know Knoxville Raceway, they have some pretty high guardrails in the corners, about 10 or 15 feet. And a car went over that 
and the safety crewman threw the fire extinguisher over the wall and then climbed up over after it <laughs> to get to the wrecked car on the other side. Our guys would do that. They would. Luckily, we don't have walls that high. Although there was one night when we saw Mike Ling get up over the fence in turn number one, and the safety crew didn't take that long to get there. Actually. Back to green flag racing this time by Hoskins, the leader with four laps to go. Single file restart now with under five laps to go in this one. Mark Bazain staying as close as he can to Rob Hoskins as they crawl up to the exit of corner four and green flag comes back out. Hoskins once again able to drive away. We've got four to go here as Crumby would like to cap off his season with a feature win. He's been in a lot of great runs this year, Tommy. Last week's flat tire kind of took him out of the championship contention. But he is in contention for a win here as he drives up to the back door of the 21X. Crumby slides up a bit high in corner four, but he's still on the move here in that 63 car. Brandon Jansen's the points leader staying right behind him. And that's what he's got to do if Jansen wants to lock up this title here. Trying to go back to back like Dave Bailey did in the Thunderstocks off of turn number four. Here they come. It's the 37H of Rob Hoskins with just two laps to go. So Jansen's unlike last year has a chance to finish the championship off on the track he had to sit and watch at the end of last week's or last year's season championship feature he's fourth right now hoskins comes out of corner four with the white flag in the air one more lap around for him oh man can Bazine do something to steal this one away from rob hoskins he gets a little bit loose on the bottom of one and two but the 37 h pulling away down the back straight away Hoskins running some very quick laps here. Just ran his quickest laps of the race at the end of this one. And Hoskins will come out of corner four and get the win. Second is Mark Bazine. Third is Brandon Crumby. Fourth, unofficially your track champ again in 2016 is Brandon Jansen. And Chad Smelzer takes a top five finish in the number 90. So Greg Kellen will head down to Mobile One at Victory Lane. Get a word with Rob Hoskins. Mark Bazine and Brandon Crumby, as well as your unofficial track champ, Brandon Jansen's back to back here in 2016. Well, the rabbit jumps to the front of the field here in Epic Race for season championship night. Down here in Mobile One Victory Lane, out of the car comes Rob Hoskins. Rob says, finally, I finished the race. <laughs> Not only did you finish it, you finished it first and you beat the car, the best car all season long in Mark Bazine. Yeah, I, I, knew, I think I knew he was there on the restarts, but I just put it down and didn't look back. I didn't even think about anything, just straight ahead. Super tacky track here tonight. Looked fast and looked fun. Oh, it was a lot of fun. I didn't even know if high or low was good. I just went where the car went. <laughs> Who would you like to thank for the win? Uh, okay, well, I'll thank my wife because she lets me do this. Uh, I don't have a crew. I pretty much look after myself, so... Uh, I'll thank, uh, I'll thank the track, uh, Nosh Weekend, for giving us a great facility here. And, and uh, anyway, I'll thank the rest of the competitors, too, because it's a great thing to, to do. A very happy Rob Hoskins down here in Victory Lane for the HRW Automotive Mini Stocks. Second place, Mark Bazine. Man, what a season you had. You had the best car, one of the best drivers out here. Just couldn't put it together for a championship, couldn't make all the races. But, uh, man, you got to be proud of 2016. Yeah, it's... Uh... I'm happy. It, uh, it is what it is with the uh, championship. Um, I can't thank my sponsor enough. Uh, Jay welcomed me to the Bird Barn team there in the fall, and I knew it would be good. I had the car to beat all year, and I knew that. Um, what, can, what more can you ask for? As the family settled down from the win last week in the Art Hill Memorial for Jay. Uh, I think he's going to rub it in all year. 
There you have it. Mark Bazine comes home in second. We'll grab a hold of Brandon Crumby here, who comes home in third, second place in the standings in his rookie season. Brandon, is it safe to say you enjoyed dirt here in 2016? I had uh, pretty well the best season I've had in probably about eight years. It's, it's just been fantastic. Did you ever imagine you'd end up in victory lane and be up in the points chase by the end of the season? In my first year, absolutely not. I uh, never expected the success we had with this car, but uh, as soon as I got it from Jason, he said I was going to have fun, and uh, he wasn't wrong. Who would you like to thank? I got to thank my dad, uh, my girlfriend, everybody at home, uh, California Dave's, Amswell Synthetics, everybody makes this happen for us. There you have it, Brandon Crumby comes home third tonight, second in the standings, and for the second year in a row, Brandon Jansen's at the top of the pile, a good solid season, consistency got the championship this year. Yeah, it was a great season. Um, that was, it was pretty, pretty nerve-wracking. I was nervous all week, didn't, get, didn't sleep very good, but uh, my strategy for this race was just to follow that 63 car. I knew I could, I could afford 10 positions, he could afford 10 positions on me, but I just stuck to the rear of him, and then at the end of the race, it wasn't risk worth the risk of trying to pass him at all. I just wanted to finish and finish it up. Who would you like to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank our sponsor, uh, Hawkins Electric, uh, Hammond Air Conditioning, uh, all my friends and family and fans that come every week, uh, my crew, uh, Kyle, Spence, Martin, uh, my brother, and my beautiful fiance, Vicky, for uh, putting up with all the time that I spent with this car and with my team. And, and it takes a lot of effort to do this, and it's not easy to do, and it's not easy to do by yourself. You need lots of help. There you have it. Brandon Jansen is the champion for 2016. We'll bring in the Epic Racewear crew, and Brandon will get himself a brand new fire suit courtesy of Epic Racewear. Tommy, guess what? Now it's the crate feature. We're ready to go. Thank you, Greg. I haven't been here since August 5th, so cut me a little bit of slack. It's good to be back here tonight. And we have 17 Strickland's GMC crate sprint cars ready to race here in their final points race of 2016. A couple of special events left for them on the 2016 calendar, but this one's their final one for the points. And it's the tightest championship chase of them all. Just four points between first and second, Holly Porter and Jesse McDonald. Here is your lineup for their 25 lap epic racewear season championship feature. Starting on the pole from Caledonia, the runway energy is Sweet and Speedway. Number 88 is Jesse McDonald. Starting second from St. Agatha, the Creative Edge Signs and Graphics, Cal Tire Shoppers Drug Mart. Number 18 is Josh Schantz. Starting third from Caledonia, the Burger Barn East One Construction. Number 55, it's Mikey Bobby Mike Thorne. And starting fourth from Waterford, the Miska Trailer Factory, Climatizer Cellulose. Number 12 is Brad Heron.